Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. We're in the second week of April, and I wanted to talk about swarm management for a horizontal hive. What can we do? What spring management is important for hives that are going horizontally as opposed to a Langstroth hive, which you just keep adding boxes to. There's a little bit of difference in management, but the principles are still the same. You gotta keep the queen in laying room, but we're gonna do some checkerboarding. We're also gonna look through and see if they're building any swarm cells. A week and a half ago, I pulled a gorgeous frame of brood out of this colony because they're just so big and we're trying to keep them a little bit behind. Um, well, we're trying to pull them back because they're a little bit ahead and the honey flow is not quite here yet. But this colony is doing great. Last year, we did an alcohol wash and found that the mites were a little under 2%. We hit them with Apigard, which is a thymol product, and that reduced the mites well below 1% and made sure they had plenty of feed to go through winter. We also had this divider board right here and dropped it down here and kept it to about a double deep size worth of space for them to overwinter and they did a very good job. One of the things I will say about horizontal hives is there's, it's more involved with frame manipulation. We got to make sure going into winter we don't have a bunch of honey over here but the bees are clustered over here, especially if you're in a cold area where it stays cold for long periods of time, unlike Tennessee where I'm at, that's really vital. So let's get into this colony. Hopefully they're not making any swarm cells, but it's that time of the year and the pollens are plentiful. The bees are a little aggravated because we had four inches of rain yesterday and a little bit this morning. It is soggy and windy out here. So these two frames had brood on them these did not right here, and we'll be filling the rest of this out with honeycombs because the honey flow should be here within a week or so. So see what I've got right here? We've got capped brood. Look at all that pollen right there. As we start seeing this much reserve in a colony, we'll go through here, and if it's like the other colonies in the yard, there's really no reason to feed pollen patties anymore unless we just get some really bad weather. So as you can see, mostly capped brood right here. That's a lot of bee power fixing to happen. Now if I have to pull the bees back because they're too strong, then this will probably be the frame that I take because the colony I give it to won't have to do much work. All they'll have to do is keep that brood warm and then they'll be made stronger. We'll probably have to checkerboard some frames in this colony and hopefully no swarm cells, but we're starting to see a lot of that and this colony is really strong. Even though I yanked some brood out. We're seeing drone brood down in here. Some that are capped, some that have not been capped. Look at this bee bread all down in here, this excess protein and fats. And there's just pollen baskets like that bee right there with kind of a tan pollen. It's awesome. Right now, I'm not seeing any swarm cells, and you have to watch it. Things are not always what they seem. Now, one of the nice things about a Langstroth box setup is I can lift up even the bottom box and see, oh, they've got swarm cells. Not always are the swarm cells at the bottom of the frames. That is, by and large, true. I'd say over 90% of them are on the bottoms of the combs where you'll see swarm cells but that's not always the case. Check this out right here. This is a queen cup. Nothing has been laid into it. It is dry, whoops. However, let's say we're running a double deep configuration, not a horizontal hive, and this is in the bottom box. So if there's another deep frame up here and the queen's coming down and she lays in this cell, they'll draw it out just like a swarm cell. And so it, whenever you do start seeing swarm cells, you have to go through literally every frame and shake bees off and make sure that there's nothing in there anywhere because if you miss one, they will swarm. All right, that frame's looking good. Man, if we got this much brood out to here, it makes me wonder how much brood is in this colony. Gosh, what an awesome young queen. She was superseded. The original was superseded last year in July. We've got a young, vigorous queen queen who was just kicking it out. Tons of drones in here. That's a good sign of healthy bees. They don't raise a lot of surplus drones unless they just have tons of nutrition and very low pest pressure. 
great frame. I might need to take a couple frames from this colony. The honey flow is still, I'd say, when we're starting to get some nectar in from red bud, but we're not getting really a, a lot of surplus, just enough to keep the bees brooding. You know, not, we're not having to feed. That's, that's awesome. Red bud honey is kind of gross in my opinion anyways, but some people probably like it. Look at all that bee bread right there. This can actually be a problem. We've had, last week was a great week for flights and they have brought so much pollen in they can actually backfill the brood nest and the queen runs out of room to lay. And then if you get a combination of a lot of nectar and a lot of bee bread that takes a lot of space for that queen um, where she can't lay from that queen. And so that's, that's a problem, something we have to watch out for. And we will, if we find a frame of bee bread with no brood on it, or very little, like this drone down here, we will put this in the freezer to use for giving to colonies we're gonna raise queens with so they have plenty of the natural goodies. There is some capped brood in here in between. You can see where the queen's having a hard time finding room to lay. This is a good sign right here. It's another dry cup on the bottom. We got drones. But things can change so rapidly during the season. If, whenever you have capped brood, within 13 days, that capped brood is emerged. So within two weeks, the capped brood that we've seen so far is all going to be emerged. There's over 6,000 cells to a deep frame. So there's a lot of bees on the way. And so within a short amount of time, our bees could be wanting to swarm and with a little bit of a nectar flow these bees are totally going to want to swarm what we have to do is keep them in the mode of not reproduction but into storage mode expansion mode and we want them to when we put the frames over here we want them to want to fill that up as beekeepers we can't really make the bees do anything we can do our best to encourage situations that cause the bees to think well we need to put up stores instead of splitting all right so this is a frame when i swiped the last frame of brood from them that i told you about i gave them this one and they have put some nectar down in there this was a beat up comb you can see where they're still repairing some of the areas that had a little bit of wax moth damage but they seem to be doing good it was very minimal damage with a little bit more flow they should clean this back out and we're just seeing nectar in there wow that's awesome i'm going to take this and stick this to the side there's no brood so there's no worries about chilling it we are going to give a little bit more smoke it is so windy i hope that dead cat that is on the camera is blocking out most of it for you guys But pulling that frame of brood and giving them that extra room to put some of that nectar or whatever is important. Oh goodness. Butterfingers in the bee yard. Wow, there was some nectar that came out of there though. They're bringing in nectar today. If it's shaking out like that, wow, that is excellent. Whoo, about pinched that one. Well, that was a dumb move right there. But you can see all this capped brood right here. Fresh nectar. Here's a, a bee emerging out. Wow, this, this frame is loaded with young bees emerging out. Probably take this frame. You're like, well, Cayman, if you take these frames, what about your honey flow? Isn't that going to affect your honey flow? And it may to a degree, but I don't like losing swarms. If we, if we shoot off a five pound swarm out of this colony, that will impact my honey flow right there. And I like making more bees. And honestly, early on, uh, losing a little bit of population won't reduce the, the, the honey crop much. My goal is if we have a good honey flow year, is to fill up about 15 or so deep combs of honey in this colony. Wow, look at that nectar. So it's a good thing that we got in here. That is all fresh. And between that and the pollen, there's definitely gonna be swarming tendency going on. This would be a good frame to pull as well. There's a little bit of uncapped larvae down in here. Man, it is windy today. 
haven't seen the queen yet. You all let me know if you spot her. I haven't been looking too hard either. It's kind of difficult sometimes finding the queen and shooting a video at the same time. Trying to make sure you don't say stuff that your wife doesn't approve of. That's the trick right there. How am I doing so far? Eh, so-so. Alright, I'll take that. Wow, what a heavy frame right here. Oh my goodness. Look at all that bees. And bee power right there. And I just keep sliding these frames off right here. This colony is fixing to be massive. And it's, it's going to swarm soon. All the conditions. Congested brood nest. We've got to checkerboard some frames in here. But so far, thankfully, I'm not seeing any any tendency to swarm yet which if we can prevent it from even starting that's the best way to prevent swarming looking down here there's a lot of drone cells these are okay there's a dry queen cup here dry queen cup here again one of the biggest issues i have with horizontal hives is just the fact that we have to literally dive down into each frame now I, now honestly we are done. I'm not, if I haven't seen swarm cell tendency by now, it's not going on in the colony. But if I did start seeing it, then I'd have to literally go through every frame. Once the honey flow starts, I plan on using a little excluder to keep the queen laying in just an area about this big, which will help with that to a degree. But let's just focus on cutting her back. I'm going to yank one more frame or two, just because I can. I'm gonna smoke those bees down. This is a this is a really nice hive right here. Very gentle, even with this ill weather, big population. This is everything I'd love to see in a hive right here. This is not ideal weather and still so gentle. And just look at that brood. They're just now capping this frame. Got some in the center working their way around. A lot of times if the queen has a nice open frame, she'll start in the center and kind of work her way around and around if she has the opportunity to do so. And just more of the same. So much bee power right here. Wow, if we can get a good honey flow this year, this colony is just going to fill this thing up full of honey. It's going to take a little work on our part though to keep them from swarming. All right, last frame, I promise. Now, this is lighter. And there is some capped brood, and there's Laurel spotted the queen right there. I tell you, that's, that's how you know you have a keeper, when she can film the video, keep you on point, and find the queen all at the same time. And she is busying herself, just running around, laying up, any empty comb that she can find and wow what a gal I love it and you can see this is the perfect frame for her so right here there's a new bee coming on out right there if you can see that and as they're literally coming out she's putting them back in all right now we have to be careful though because if the queen gets on these end bars we could crush her if we're not careful, especially with this wind. So we want to be real nice and easy putting this queen back in. All right, so now what do we do? We've got a perfect colony. I mean, it is just awesome. But what do we do to keep them from swarming? I've already pulled one frame of capped brood from this colony, and it doesn't even look like it. We've got to keep her in laying room. We also have to give them some room to put that nectar. So last year I harvested a five gallon bucket from this colony and all the honey was over here, brood was over here. We're going to attempt to do the same thing this year. And I've got some combs from extraction last year. And I think, yeah, here they are. Yeah. Wind's been blowing all my stuff around. So this went through our cowing system last year. This is a first year comb, it's been in storage. 
this is a good honeycomb right here and here's another one wow it's windy first things first let's put this back together but i want to give that queen some room to lay So right here we have a, a comb that hasn't been laid in much. Really only the darker areas have probably had brood in it, but that's okay. We could use this one. This comb's a little beat up. This would be a good comb to give. There's nothing in it but a little bit of bee bread, a little bit of nectar. This side is empty. And I'm just going to checkerboard a couple frames into this colony. These were on the outside, really don't have a lot of anything in them. Yeah, that's virtually empty. So we are going to checkerboard these in. Now, if you had some really cold weather on the way, it would be a bad idea to do this. If you're dropping down below freezing every night and getting highs in the 40s or lower, but we're getting highs in the 60s and 70s today without the wind. I'd be sweating like crazy. It's probably mid to upper 70s. And so that'll give her some room to lay. We're going to yank a frame or two of brood. And then we're going to add those honey supers. There's so much propolis on these frame rests it makes it a little tedious but it's good for the bees so many bees in this colony they definitely need cut back let's see what we have here ah yeah even this comb right here has brood that queen has been moving along and there is, yeah, there's eggs on this side too. It's just crazy. We know the queen's over there, so we can move a lot of stuff. Um, let's cut the video and I gotta go grab something. All right, so I have this frame that's got a little bit of brood on it. And we know the queen's over. Um, she was on this black frame, plastic frame right here. So that's a long ways off. And we are going to take this frame and shake it wow there was nectar coming out that's awesome it's first nectar shake of the year watch this hey y'all watch this couldn't help myself <laughs> shaking nectar out and it was raining all day yesterday so that is today's nectar if i had to guess i'm going to say it's red bud let's find out Hmm. Very watery. That's not red bud. Red bud is got a pretty strong flavor, in my opinion. That's very light. Hmm. I don't know what that is, but it's good and it's free. <laughs> I like that very much. So we shook that frame of bees down into there. And now we have, excuse me this frame and it's just all kinds of brood and it's emerging yes you can see them right there so i'm going to give this to a colony that's healthy but behind where it needs to be for honey production and they're fixing to get thousands of healthy young bees plus the bees on this comb to help them out and some bee bread and some other resources wow just tons of bees emerging out of this comb and this side's got a lot as well. So this is a great frame to give. And they're, they're gonna get a lot of, just a lot of everything. This is gonna really boost that colony. And it's going to really cut this one back to a degree to keep them from wanting to swarm anytime soon. And this is that frame of nectar. This is not a good frame for, um, you know, having honey put in. There's been a lot of brood in this frame. So we don't want that for honey production. Good bit of nectar shook out of that. 
Wow, a lot of nectar. I'm surprised. We are going to, hmm, there's two frame. This is a brood frame and this is a brood frame. We're going to stick this into here. And what we'll have to do is when time comes, a honey flow starts kicking in, we'll pull a couple more frames out and replace them with honeycombs and put an excluder or something. Because I don't really need the queen to have this many frames of brood. Last year, what we did is when the queen, they started making honey, we got all of the brood condensed down to an area about this big and then put solid frames of nectar, about two of them right here in honey, and she didn't cross over there, uh, over that. And sometimes they will, but this time they did not, and it, was, it worked out really good. So now we got all this space over here, and that is an old comb, so we don't want that one. This one's a, a new comb, so that would be okay. This has had a little bit of brood in it, but barely any at all, so I wouldn't mind having that as a honeycomb. That's not going to bother me at all. And let's grab all this right in here. So that's a nice honeycomb right there. And we'll come back and space them out to about nine frame spacing. So they fatten out the combs really good. Here are some they did not draw very, well they draw, drew very good on one side, but didn't do anything on this side. So we're gonna take that and put that into here. And once the bees start filling this up with honey, they will draw it out the rest of the way. Now I came back and I coated this with more wax. So it's very thick and sticky. Um, it's, well, it's tacky, that's the way good wax should be. If it gets old and dries out, they don't wanna draw it very much. So I'm going to take this frame and reverse it so I have both foundation sides against each other. That's very important because if you have it like this, they'll fatten out these combs really fast and far, and then they won't hardly draw this foundation because they just they prefer the comb so much more than foundation. Now, I am going to, you know what? These have also been rewaxed. I am going to move this down, foundation, foundation. Look at that, Laurel. So we've got a foundation right here, we got a foundation here, and now all of this is gonna be, it does smell really good. I just coated them with our own beeswax about a week ago. This will get us some new combs and some perfect honey. So there we go right there. We have slowed swarmings roll down. Now they have access to all of this that now that I've removed the follower board. And we just gotta keep on top of this colony because this isn't the last of swarming. This will really settle it down, but I think we'll probably need to do one, maybe two more things before the honey flow to keep this colony where it needs to be and keep it really strong and get it over the hump of wanting to reproduce and focus on long-term storage. It's all about stimuli. Thanks for watching this video. I'm going to go to a colony and give this nice frame of brood and bees to that colony and I will just shake the bees off in the front of the entrance and then I'll open it up, smoke the bees, drop the comb in and all the forager bees will fly back to here, the ones that will fight, and all the nurse bees will walk right in like they own the place and no, nothing's wrong, especially in springtime when there's nectar and pollen coming in. Whew, this has been a long one, but this is an awesome time of the, the year, and I love spring and beekeepers and beekeeping. Thanks for watching and joining me today.